All right, guys, welcome to Florida Keys Life. I'm Jason. If you haven't been here before, welcome. Uh, we got lots of different videos on this channel. Today, uh, we're going to do a boat performance specs of my boat, 273cc Stingray. Um, it's not because I think my boat's like super awesome or I'm trying to justify my decision, but I did a boat walkthrough. I posted some brief performance information on the boat. Um, but it wasn't quite enough and I'm, I'm gonna feed in some videos of me using the boat actually in the fishing state I'm, I don't have all my rods on board got you know lesser fuel than normal uh, right now so it's more similar to a boat test uh, like a performance report that Suzuki would do or some other manufacturers but more in a real way real world state I have you know all my sandbar gear on board that I always keep underneath the the uh, sink in the head compartment not full of water not full of ice and all that stuff but I have almost all my fishing gear on board probably about 80% of it anyways the, the, the real thing that I'm a real reason I'm posting this detailed performance information is that this hull has something to it the seaplane hull that Stingray has uh, is substantial I've got like 120 hours on this boat so far like close to 3,000 miles running a sea on this boat and uh, I'm pretty impressed um, the other issue I'm posting this is there's recently I had a Facebook discussion with a guy that ultimately decided that he thinks this boats under power now he had the 200 Yamaha's he was looking at it's just a misunderstanding to think that this hull needs 300 horsepower now this hole when I when I hauled it out at the boat yard when I did some work it weighed 8,000 I was not full of fuel, I was not full of water, ice, and I did. I had everything stripped off the boat because I was ceramic coating the boat. Um, you can see that video here. Uh, weighed 8,000, so really rigged up with all my stuff, weighs about 9. It's an inch short of 28 feet. It has as nice a head as you're going to find in, in most center consoles. Uh, so this is not a light, stripped down fishing boat. Like the only the only other boat I've seen that have similar performance numbers is a 266 Sailfish. It just so happens my neighbor across the canal has one with 200 Suzuki's on it. And it does similar performance numbers. Uh, but it's a stripped down fishing boat. The head is minimal sucks. It has no bow seating. Um, doesn't have as many light. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that that boat doesn't have and it's a lot lighter boat. And so when you add on an extra thousand to two thousand pounds on this boat compared to a 266 sailfish for example um, we get the same performance numbers and it's because of the design of the hull uh, and so that's what i think that's what i want to show you here today i'm going to show you in this video i'm going to walk through on the screen several boat comparisons so we looked at sportsman's we looked at um, sailfish we looked at tidewater we looked at there's several different other boats uh, sea hunt that's another one that's really popular right now and they design they build a similar quality boat although this hull is vacuum bag so that kind of gets it a, a, a notch up uh, but their hull design is not quite as good and it's not that I'm trying to bash any of these other manufacturers I'm just trying to show you the Z plane hull design of this stingray is there something to it um, and now they, they got it they got a 250 253 cc center console a 25 footer that will actually spec out real similar to this with 150s normally a 25 footer with 150s is kind of a cheap entry bottom level uh, twin uh, underperforming dog but it doesn't it performs with similar numbers to this boat with 150s so this boat with 200s is great 300s I mean it's, it's overkill. And the biggest issue is it's the hull design dictates the speed. A lot of people think it's the horsepower hung on the back of the boat. No, that is not the case. Top wide open throttle spec is stupid. If you're running at wide open throttle, you got more money than sense, and I don't really care what the specs say about that because you're just dumb. I'm sorry, I don't know how else to put it. So many people in the boat industry talk about wide open throttle, oh my gosh. That's like driving down the road with your car putting your gas pedal to the floor and leaving it for an hour or two and thinking oh that's just great let's see what let's see how fast it will go let's see how much fuel it'll suck let's see how many hours it lasts that's just idiotic okay you can't wide open throttle is a stupid spec the other th considerate thing to think about with the hull 
So I live in the Keys. We're out on the ocean. Most people that are going to have a big center console like this, uh, medium-sized center console like this, are in the ocean. They're not on a lake. I mean, okay, you got some great lakes people, or there are some lakes here, but whoop de doo A lake, you got you go a few miles, and so what? The ocean, you can go all over the place. The Bahamas, Tortugas runs. We haven't done it in this boat yet, but we'll be posting those videos. You got stuff, you got places to go. Very rarely is it flat calm. I mean, I was, those flat calm days where the water's like crystal clear, that's really what you live for down here in the Keys. But there, to be quite honest, there's not that many of them. We've had a house down here for almost three years, going on three years. Um, lived down here for a year, been down here a lot, talked to many of the locals. I mean, those flat calm days are few and far between. They do come, they do come, don't get me wrong, they do come, but they're not coming. The most common day when I'm out, I try to say, you know, in three foot seas, I stay in because it's, I mean, it just beats you up and I live here so I can go out whenever. I don't have to necessarily go out all the time. I can pick and choose my days. But that, that, that one and a half to two and a half foot seas is pretty common. I mean, when it gets down to one and a half, and, and I haven't fished for a while, I'm going. I try to get out once or twice a week. This week, I'm actually going out every day, even in three footers. But you're always going to have some chop like that. One and a half, two foot seas, two and a half foot. And when you have two and a half foot seas, you've got three and a half, four footers mixed in there. When you've got one and a half foot seas, you got three footers mixed in there. So your hull dictates how fast you can go. It doesn't matter if I had 400s on the back. When it's two foot seas, 30 miles an hour is tops and sometimes I'm backing down even a little bit the more and so if you have notched out holes that just puts you on top of the water uh, that doesn't give you a better ride you get a little bit of air cushion underneath but the air cushion sends aerated water back to the props you eat some fuel efficiency up that doesn't change that much so um, it eats it eats fuel efficiency but it doesn't change the ride that much so the ride of the Z-plane hull, 28-foot boat, 30 miles an hour in two-foot chop, that's the best you're going to do. The only thing you're going to get better than that is if you start getting up, you know, into the mid-30s in a mono or if you go to a catamaran or a trimaran. I mean, there's some other, there's a few performance trimarans out there that are interesting. Uh, but when you're in this mono hull center console, 30 miles an hour is about it in any kind of chop. The two, the one and a half, two foot, two and a half foot seas is common. You're not running around at 50 miles an hour in two foot seas. I promise you, there is not a hull out there you can run around at 50 miles an hour under 30 foot in two foot seas and, and you know, still be functional. It, it just doesn't happen. It's just not there. So there's no reason to even bother that. 30 mile an hour number is, is kind of your number. Now maybe, uh, you know, it's a little bit calmer. You want to pick it up to 35 or even if you want to live on the wild side, kick it up to 40. Okay, I can do that with 200 horsepower on the back with twin 200. So 400 horsepower on the back of this boat. I can kick it up to 40 miles an hour if I want uh, and still get pretty decent fuel economy. So the difference that I'm doing on this performance test than most other performance tests is that I am going to do it by hull speed, not by RPM. We'll look at hull speed per so the speed of the boat, we'll look at then the RPMs, how, how high the revolutions per minute are on the engine to push it to that speed and how much fuel it sucks. That's the important number. It's not the RPMs. It's how fast the hull's going and then what you do. And that really did, that, that is what is the difference between the different horsepower packages you can hang on the boat. That's where it matters. Now today, uh, right out here where we're doing it, I'm just in Pine Channel outside my canal. Uh, it's blowing somewhere around 10 to 12 right now. We've got a little bit of chop on top of the water. Uh, and so we're gonna go both ways at each speed. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it at 28 miles an hour. I'm gonna do it at 30. I'm gonna do it at 32. And then I'm gonna do it at 35. That's it. We'll look at the performance specs both ways at each speed on there. So that's what's important to the hull. It's, it's that's why all boats should be comparing it is the speed of the boat that's also a side note is why i have a problem with sharrows i really would like to get sharro propellers uh, but they're so stupid expensive right now they're still five grand to props so it'd be 10 grand to put them on my boat 
and you get somewhere around 10% performance, but they do it by engine RPMs. I don't give a crap what RPM the engine is turning as long as the hull's going the way that I want to go. And so that I have little to no way to know, okay, at 30 miles an hour with these motors, what is going to be my fuel efficiency? And it's a 100% gamble. Ten, it's a $10,000 gamble to know what that is because every other boat they do, they compare it by engine RPM and it's really hard to see that speed of the boat to see what it's doing. I mean, it, most of the efficiency gains are all excited, 30% efficiency gain, but it's when you at 3,000 RPM, but most of those bolts they test at 3,000 RPM are going like 24 miles an hour. I don't wanna go 24 miles an hour. I wanna go 30 pretty much everywhere I go. That's pretty much the max for comfort. So at that speed, I don't know what gains it would be. It's a 100% gamble. They won't, they won't let you try them out and send them back if you're not happy. They have no program for that. So I've been reluctant to, to do it. Even if I do get somewhere in that 20% range, you know, I'm putting around 200 hours a year on this boat, maybe a little bit more. It would take me four, five, six years to pay for those props and fuel efficiency gains. So uh, it hasn't seemed worth the gamble to me just yet. All right, stand by. We'll get all set up here to do our first run at 28 miles an hour. Okay, it looks like 28 against the current, right at 2.6 in these conditions. There's 28, 3,500 RPM. 2.97 with the current. 3850 is about the number. Two point. That's yeah, 2.59 to 2.6. Really close. Yeah, that's right at 30. Oh boy, I hit three with the current. Holy cow. Okay, guys. So we finished all of the testing that we were gonna do. Um, we showed you 28 and 30. The footage was just kind of dumb. You'd click off the video if I just kept going through. We didn't do 35 because I was going up and down the dang channel and people thought I was nuts. So I just I, I skipped that one step. So we did 32 and 40 against the current with the current, and then here was the average. So we um, you know average 2.79. Both 28 and 30 was the same. We actually hit three with the current there, but anyhow, uh, 32, 2.64, and at 40 miles an hour, we were still averaged over two miles to the gallon. Pretty dang good. Boat was in near real world situation. A um, little bit light because I had 80 gallons, just under half a tank, and and uh, or right at a half a tank. And not all my fishing gear, but most of it. And most all the sandbar stuff and all that. Just again, I want to reiterate that because these tests I'm going to show you in review of other boats um, is not that case. It was just in complete test mode, gutted boat. Um, and they don't even get better numbers than this. Now, I'm going to show you some real world stuff now that we did with this test. And then some real world when I was actually going fishing and I showed you what it, it did. So stand by. Hey guys, I just want to update you on some real world performance numbers. I'm going to do an update video on this because we've had some people claim that this boat's underpowered, which is silly. Uh, so this is real world. I'm going to do the sea trials with less fuel and compare like what they do on boat tests and all that crap. But this is real world. I'm loaded up. I've got 87, or where we are, 87 gallons of fuel, 60 some percent. I'm going 30.7. I'm going against the current. And I'm getting 2.66. I've got a full of bait. I got my uh, fish box full of a bunch of chunk bait. I'm full of ice. I'm full of fresh water. I am just myself. So it's just me. And if I slow all the way down to an even 30, I'm going to get that to 2.7. And I'm probably going to, I'm not going to fiddle with it that much. Look at that 2.68 against the current. 86 gallons of fuel on board, 67% fuel tank, 31.1, 2.67. I don't think there's another boat out there that does that. And I'm at, uh, what, 3,800 RPM. Against the current, against the tide. The tide's just starting to come off high tide. It's just coming back. It's a, drop, it's a falling tide. So uh, that's real world data right there. That's super impressive. That's what makes this hole design, the Z-plane hole, I'm telling you. There's something to it. I'm running along here. Nah, it's still at 30. I've cut my fuel economy's dropped a bit. But I want to point out, 
that this, this underpowered complaint. The hull is what dictates your speed. That's what makes the ride of the boat. It doesn't matter how much horsepower is hung off the back. When it's this, the forecast calls for two foot seas today. And it's probably, it's probably that, but there's some three footers mixed in there. That's a pretty normal day down here in the Keys. I tell you, there's not that many flat days. This is pretty normal. And here I am, I'm sitting at the helm seat and I'm fairly comfortable. I mean, I'm not getting, my kidneys aren't beat up. I'm not all nutty. I pick up the speed much and it gets uncomfortable. I can promise you that. The hull dictates the ride. And so with this power package I've got back here, the twin 200s, I'm getting as efficient as I can at this speed. And it doesn't matter if I had twin 400 hung off the back. I'm not going faster than 30 miles an hour in this, in this condition of seas. It's just not happening. So this is the right power package for this hull, and the hull dictates it. Now you get a bigger hull, you get a wider beam, you can maybe even out the ride a little bit, but now your horsepower, your, your fuel economy is going to go in the toilet. So um, just keep that in mind when you're considering that uh, and looking at the performance numbers of this boat. Okay, so here's the boats we're going to compare to. Now, uh, I'm not trying to say anything bad about these boats. These are all good quality boats. And the reason I chose these boats is very close to the same size, very close to the same amenities, close to the same weight, and they all have two, they all have tests with 200 horsepower motors. Now, you can put 300s on any of these boats, even, even the Stingray. You can put 300s on every mile per hour during the test along the whole thing is less fuel economy. So Sportsman Open 282 center console. First one we're going to see it's it's a touch longer, a touch wider, um, similar capacities and about the same weight, really close to the same weight. Uh, similar layout seating in the front. You've got a you know smaller coffin box here but very similar boat. Uh, so here's the performance report, the Yamaha performance report. You see Sportsman 282 with the F200 Yamahas. And you see at 20, this is what they say is their best at 25. Nobody wants to go 25 miles an hour, but 2.5. So at 30, we're, it's 2.2. We're at 30, we're 2.6. So that's four tenths of a mile of a gallon, which means over about 100 miles, that's around four gallons of fuel extra. So if you go to like the Bahamas and back, uh, you know, it can be an extra 8, 10 miles, of, 8, 10 gallons of fuel uh, for extra capacity, especially when you're starting to go out into the further parts of the Bahamas where fuel can become an issue. So it starts to become a factor uh, at 30. And you see at 40 miles an hour, it's all the way down to 1.6. So we were still a touch over two. Um, so better performance. And when you take a look at this boat again with 300s on it, all those numbers are just a lot worse. Uh, so that's that one. Now the next one we're going to look at is the Sea Hunt Gamefish 27. They have a 28, very similar specs, but this one is more close to our Stingray. Uh, it's about six inches shorter. It's about a foot wider, for a little over a foot wider, and it's surprisingly lighter. Um, about the same fuel capacity or similar and uh, similar layouts. So that's why we chose this boat. You look at the F200s, here it is. Here's the Sea Hunt Gamefish 27. And it comes a little bit closer. So at 20, that's really close to 27 and 2.5. We're well over almost 2.8. Um, and at, you know, 40 is somewhere in here. It's probably not hitting two because at 38, it's 2.06. So I doubt from 38 to 40, it's going to stay there. Seems to be dropping pretty quick. So, I mean, even just to 43, it's down to 1.6. So, um, uh, again, this is a test boat. So they tell you up in there it's half fuel, two people, two batteries. I have four batteries, one person, half fuel, but all my gear and real world stuff the boats rigged um, so uh, and it's also on a lake and look at that 356 feet elevation uh, 5 to 10 mile an hour winds so anyway next boat Tidewater this one comes the closest now when I was actually shopping for this Stingray I was highly considering the Tidewaters uh, I like this big bow flare they got layouts pretty nice they got a big coffin box area here or coffin box seating whatever you want to call it 
uh, and all of the other amenities are very similar. Uh, I like the Stingray better, and the, actually out of all these three, the layout's better, especially the transom. Uh, it's great, but you see the specs here, 27.2 or 27.11, it's another you know, foot wider, lighter again, uh, which is surprising. Um, but here is the performance of that boat, if I can get my clicker to work. There we go. Okay, Yamaha. Uh, Tidewater 272cc uh, F200s, there they are right there. These boats, I think you can get them all with Mercs. They got the numbers. Uh, none of them have Suzuki, which is surprising. And I think Suzuki does a touch better. I bet if you put Suzuki's on the same boat, you might see a tenth of a mile or 0.01 or you'd see a slight improvement. But either way, so here's the number. They're the closest here. So 27.8, we were at 28 on the nose and we were 2.79. Actually, 2.795 was the average. Uh, and here you see at 32, they're 2.45, we were 2.6. At They don't even really show you um, that well to see the 40 number. I mean, you can't even really, you can't tell what it was doing at 40. At 38, it was 2.2. And at 43, it's 1.8. So it's, it's pretty close. I mean, this is probably the closest one, but it certainly doesn't hit it. And this is test boat stage. I mean, look at this guy. There's nothing on this boat, I can promise you that. Uh, my boat is real, real world numbers. So if you like this information, please like and subscribe. It's not that I'm trying to brag about my boat or anything. I just, the Stingray is a lesser known boat. I'm not sure exactly why. I mean, they're kind of new to the center console market, but I, I have the evidence that the Z-plane hole does make a difference. Uh, it's not just blowing smoke. I'm not getting paid by Stingray. They're not giving me nothing for this review. I'm just simply showing you something that I found in the boating market that does seem to make a difference. So we appreciate you and have a nice day.